much. A new report has some good news. It says the overall death rate from cancer in the U.S. has been falling for the last 25 years. Uh, the report has was rather released this week by the American Cancer Society. But it did include some bad news as well. Death rates for certain types of cancer are on the rise. Here to break down the report for us is Dr. David Spiegel. He's an oncologist at the Sarah Cannon Cancer Institute. Thanks for coming by, doctor. Yeah, thanks for having me. So which cancers are getting more deadly and, and why is that happening? Well, first, it's worth recognizing that when you look at cancer as a whole, death rates are going down about one to two percent less death uh, rates uh, we're seeing for men and women. When you when you break it down and you, you realize there's a lot of different kinds of cancers that men and women experience, there are some cancers like cervical cancer, uterine cancers, where we're seeing slight rises in death rates. A lot of reasons for that that we still are trying to understand. But when we think about the major cancers like lung cancer, those death rates are declining. So let's talk about this really good news that the overall death rates are going down. What are the factors? Is it that people are getting tested earlier? Is it that our treatment methods are better than they were before and so they're resulting in more people surviving? Yeah, it probably is a little bit of all of that. Uh, things like uh, diet, um, healthy lifestyles, in particular smoking. We know that smoking rates for men started dropping in the last decade or two. For women, that's been a little bit later and we're starting to realize those benefits, less deaths from lung cancer for both men and women. Men, you know, appears to be a greater drop in those death rates than we're seeing for women. But you're also seeing more screening. So we know that there's more screening for cancers like breast cancers that leads to hopefully early diagnoses of cancers that you can do something about. That's true for colorectal cancer as well. So it's probably a number of factors that lead to, to, to patients being diagnosed earlier and being able to be helped earlier and, and living longer now. So, Doctor, I know the parameters of this um, report had to do with the death rates associated with cancer. And you might not be able to speak to this, but I was just curious, the rates of cancer are they also going down? So it's one thing that people are not dying of cancer as fast, but are they also not getting cancer as well? Yeah, it can be a little bit confusing, and, and it's, it is a large report. It's, it's uh, literally hundreds of thousands of people being looked at in statistics. Uh, when you talk about who has new cancer, so if you look at women as a whole, um, there's not really a big change in the number of new cancers women are, are experiencing in, say, predicted for 2019. For men, it's down a little bit. When you talk about dying from cancer, however, for both men and women, there are less women, less men dying from cancer. So it can be a little bit confusing. Another way to think about this is about a little under 5,000 people in America are going to be diagnosed with cancer uh, each day. Unfortunately, that's true. And about um, 1,700 patients will actually uh, die from cancer. So let me restate that. About 5,000 patients are diagnosed with cancer and about 2,000 patients will die from cancer. So you can see the incidence and death rates are not exactly uh, matching up. Uh, the report also talks about the socioeconomic gap in the death rates from cancer. How does a person's financial status affect whether they live or die and who is being disproportionately affected? Yeah, to me, that's really the more uh, interesting and concerning findings that uh, you can have areas, uh, counties within the same state, for example, where we regard maybe a, a wealthier, more affluent county and a less uh, affluent county. And you look at things like lung cancer, for example, or cervical cancer, and there do appear to be growing disparities in, in not only how you're cared for, but how you do with those cancers. So say for lung cancer, your chances of of doing better with lung cancer appear to be related to your socioeconomic status. And that's a real problem we need to we need to look into, better understand, and obviously address. And so what do we make of this information, uh, you know, in terms of finding better ways to treat cancer? Well, there, there's a lot to make of this, I think. You know, first of all, there's, there's a, a number of advances we're making in technology with screening patients, understanding who benefits from that early screening. The therapies are, are vastly improved. We've talked a lot this past uh, few years about this wave of therapies that are designed to boost your immune system, therapies designed to target cancers, the signals within cancers that make them grow. So a lot of promise, a lot of excitement of new therapies coming, coming to, uh, to help patients in the clinic. And I think these data are starting to show the realization of those benefits. 
I, I expect, I think we all expect in the next decade to see further declines in death rates from cancer because of the advances we're seeing today. It's just they don't show up right away in these statistics. It can take years to see those benefits, but we're seeing them every day in clinic, and, and I think we're going to realize that in the future. All right, Dr. Spiegel, thank you so much for your time. This fascinating report. We appreciate you, we appreciate you breaking it down for us. Yeah, thanks for having me.